What's up, Buckeye Nation? Floco here, Ohio State Football with Scarlet and Great, right here on YouTube. We appreciate you all for tuning in. We appreciate you all for bearing with us as we took a break, and we're trying to push out as much Buckeye content as we can for you. God bless you all. We're here some Buckeye news. We're going to talk about something today, but first I want you to hit that like button. If you're ready for the spring game, spring games in a couple of days, Saturday to be on, on Fox to be exact, Hit that like button if you're like if you're just ready for some Buckeye football. We're all ready for some Buckeye football. We've been hearing the buzz around the program going on with the uh, the spring practices and whatnot, the transfer rumors, uh, things like that. That's what we're going to talk about today is transfer rumors. So subscribe if you're going to hit that like button if you're ready for the spring game, but subscribe if you're going to be with us for the aftermath because there is going to be an aftermath. You're going to see seven to ten guys uh, skedaddle out of the program and look out for opportunities elsewhere. And you can't blame them. Don't be mad at them. Don't think something's wrong with the program. It's something that's going to happen to every major program that has major talent every year. The Georges, the Bamas, uh, whatever program you want to insert there, we're, they're all going to have transfer problems. Yeah, that's the way of the uh, the new wild, wild west of college ba- or uh, basketball. Well, basketball too. College football these days. Um, basketball just having unwrapped uh, up their season with the new uh, cha- or repeat champs, UConn. Man, they look dominant. Anyway, guys, let's talk about uh transfer rumors there's some rumors going around today um well not today last few days is uh i want to talk about some things that we all we all know dallin hayden has told the staff he plans to enter the transfer portal after the spring we wish him the best i hate to see him go but i get it too um and the, i guess hayden's not really a rumor anymore we're going to get to some rumors uh the thing I like about Hayden is, A, he's a good player, but he obviously struggled with pass pro at, at times. We all sometimes thought to ourselves, why he wouldn't play more, especially last year when we really needed it. Last couple of years, especially, actually, when you think about it, it's because of how much how many injuries there were to the uh, running back room with Mayan Williams and Trevian and Henderson. And Hayden, when he played, he flashed. He looked good, um, especially Maryland, uh, Purdue. He, he just he stepped in and played really well for us. And we always kind of thought, well, why can't he get on the field? I guess pass pro was an issue for him, but depth was an issue. Um Obviously, we favored guys like Mayan and Trevian uh, ahead of him, but it is what it is. Unfortunately, it's part of the game today. I hate to see him go, but you know what? It's just still a better outcome than what we were facing uh, after the Missouri game. Because after the Missouri game, I thought for sure Trevian was going pro. I, I, if you asked me right then and there, I'd say Trevian's definitely got to go pro. But then when he kept delaying and leaning towards coming back, you're thinking, "Wow, we might get Trevian back. That's pretty incredible." Um, and then I thought, well, okay, we'll have Trevin and Down. Okay, maybe that'll affect Down, maybe not. But now Down will definitely play a lot more in lecture. And then all of a sudden, Andrew Chudkins. I uh, did not expect us to go after him or, and actually land him, but we did. So then you got this, uh, what looks like a three-headed monster coming in. And all of a sudden, you say, okay, well, Down's iffy. We'll see if we keep him or not. We ended up, we're not going to keep him. Okay, I still, I just wish him the best. I get, go seek opportunities elsewhere and go see if you could start somewhere. He, he can be a starter for a lot of programs. That's a fact. Um, but you know, it's better than what we were facing because if we, if Trevian had gone pro, we never got Judkins. Then Dallin's the starter with pass pro problems. Maybe James Peoples or somebody like that is the backup. We probably bring somebody in. The guy from Massachusetts is an, as a as an interesting option. Um, possible to bring them in to uh, be the, that. I'd rather have running back room be Trevian Henderson and Quinchin Judkins Jud- uh, with James Peoples or or maybe or uh, Caffey uh, be the uh, third third option. Versus, I wanted Down to be that guy, but he's not going to be. Versus Down Hayden, and then you know, all, nothing but question marks behind him. So we are still ending up in a better situation because of the portal, because of our activity in the portal. And I think this plays a lot to what the fan base says: you got to stop worrying about people's feelings and do what's best for the program. I think in the running back situation, they did what was best for the program, um, and they didn't worry about feelings. And you know what, Down, I don't think I'm not saying his feelings are hurt. I'm not saying he didn't want to compete or anything like that. I don't. It's not nothing that silly. It's just look for opportunities since you're able to do it. Um, but man, managing a roster in today's college football has got to be one of the most difficult things. I mean, you almost have to hire a GM of sorts to do it. It's just a lot to ask of the uh, head coach. But anyway, uh, let's talk about uh, so. There's some crowded rooms that we have to look at. I want to talk about rumors now. These are things that uh, some of them are just uh, – actually, all of it's just pure speculation we don't know right now. Uh, but there's some message board rumors that are going on right now that I want to talk about. And first, we'll start in the QB room. Uh, it's a crowded room right now. We have five scholarship QBs. Uh, you got uh, Will Howard, uh, Devin Brown, obviously Lincoln Kynholtz. Uh, is it Kynholtz or Kynholtz? Anyway, um, 
yeah, of course, Julian Sand and Aaron Nolan. I mean, that's a lot of quarterbacks. And uh, honestly, I credit Aaron Nolan for even sticking with his uh, recruitment and commitment, uh, even though we brought in Julian Sand late as a transfer from Alabama, thanks to the Bill, Oba- uh, Bill, o- Bill, Oba- Bill O'Brien hiring, uh, which lasted 20 minutes. Best 20 minutes we've ever had as a coach. He brings in a, a, a generational-type quarterback. And is 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 from what we're understanding in the spring, that Julian Sands has been one of the top names. He's been tearing it up, and he looks really good. Some say he has the best arm on the team already. That doesn't mean he should start, mind you, for those in the comments. Um, it just means he has the most physical talent. Um, but, again, that doesn't mean you're ready to be the guy. So the guy will be Will Howard or Devin Brown. My guess is Will Howard. It'll be interesting to see what happens after spring because there's rumors that Lincoln is actually shopping around already. Uh, looking at his options, and again, this is not to accuse him of anything or anything like that, because I know he's not technically in the transfer portal just yet, at least as of this recording, but uh, there's rumors that he's looking at Iowa. I don't know if that's true or not, but it wouldn't shock, would it shock you or surprise you? And, and the way we're, they're talking up Julian's saying, it, it, you know, you almost assume Julian's possibly passed him up. Maybe not in the rotation this year, rotation at quarterback, I get it, but maybe not in the depth chart of quarterback this year. If like Will Howard went down and Devin Brown went down, they'd probably go to Lincoln. But uh, that being said, they probably see the writing on the wall to say, okay, but Julian is the future. And uh, next year when Will's gone and uh, probably Devin is gone, uh, we're going to go with Julian saying is looking like the front runner for that. And uh, Lincoln's future looks a little more in doubt. And if he left, would you blame him? No. And I honestly, Devin Brown's not, uh, you know, set in stone to stick either. If he's not the starter coming out of spring, uh, maybe he's made it interesting. I can't tell with what it doesn't matter. You could read a million reports. It just never is consistent. Uh, one guy says, well, Howard's caught up and he's really taken on the leadership role and he's, he's a high IQ and he's really become the guy. Another guy will say he's stunk and Devin Brown's been killing him all year, all spring. I, well, I don't know. My guess is they're not going to know who the starter is until they get into mid fall camp. Um, or maybe Ryan Day just says enough of that McCord Brown crap, and we're going to actually name somebody after spring. We'll see what happens. Uh, I, I do, I do understand the coaching evaluation standpoint that they they don't want to name a starter too soon and then him get complacent. So um, we'll see what happens in the fall. But I think they're going to go into fall with it still being com- a competition. But will will Devin Brown pull a, a Joe Burrow of sorts and say, well, if you can't promise me the starting job and I got to still compete for going into fall, I have to go where uh, I'm able to play, which he did at LSU. It wasn't that we picked Dwayne Haskins over him. It's that we, that's not even the true story. It's that we, we said, Joe, we just don't know right now. If you come into fall, you're going to be competing with Dwayne. And then after Joe left, clearly it was Dwayne. Um, so will Devin Brown pull a Joe Burrow? And then of course, you no know, nightmares going through people's minds right now. Is he going to go to LSU and become a Heisman winner? Remember Joe Burrow, it was still a, you know, it was a win-win for everybody. I mean, it, Joe Burrow ended up obviously with a great career at LSU, but his first year there was, you know, solid, not great. And then he just became otherworldly the next year when they brought in Joe Brady. Um, he would have done well at Ohio State, no doubt, but so did Dwayne Haskins, who broke like every Big Ten record, season record possible, uh, making Drew Brees number two in Big Ten history all of a sudden. And um, so – for people who's oh see what happens is we picked the wrong guy no that's not it everybody won and and the fact that Joe Burrow would have had two seasons left of eligibility not that Dwayne didn't two seasons that left of eligibility we ended up with Joe or Justin Fields right after Dwayne so everybody won in that scenario um but yeah if if you see Lincoln or Devin it, just keep an eye out on them my guess is uh it see if Devin's true to his word about burning the boats but if he's not it's not a big deal I get it you know you got to you got to take opportunities where you can get them. And in Lincoln, the same story. That would make Julian Sand the backup this year. And that's a little scary because we're going to run the quarterback a little bit more. So, you know, it, that means all of our hopes are hinged on to Will Howard's ability. And um, I like Will Howard. I think he's a solid player, but he's a solid player. You, I mean, I would when they say Julian Sand actually has the best arm in camp, I actually believe that. I totally believe that. So, but moving on to other positions, let's talk about the wide receivers position. Um, it's crowded right now, right? The guys you know are going to play, Jeremiah Smith, get it out of the way. He's he, he's not only going to play, he's going to start. He's been that good in camp. 
Uh, he's one of those guys that you just, when you see him play, you're like, okay, yeah, he's got me passed on the depth chart. I think the only guy he hasn't passed is Emeka Igbuka. Um, and that's because of Emeka's ability, obviously, who's a, he's still an extremely talented wide receiver, but also because of his longevity and the fact he's been there. And it was actually really, really good to have Emeka come back because we need that leadership in that room. But if he didn't, you, you would definitely be holding on to the Jeremiah Smith hype train a little bit harder. Uh, like, man, we need somebody to step up. And then, of course, you got Carnell Tate and Brandon Ennis, who figure to be uh, guys that are going to be in the rotation. It'll be interesting. Brandon Ennis is that slot receiver. Uh, you know, Carnell Tate being on the outside. It'll, it'll be interesting to see how that rotation unfolds. But, um, and they're going to go at least five, six deep as they normally do. But there's going to be some guy. They've been loading up at wide receiver for years. There's going to be some. I mean, Bryson Rogers is another guy that was in the portal, then he came back, uh, who figures to be in the rotation as well. He's had a really great spring. Uh, where does that leave guys like Jalen Ballard? You know, where does that leave uh, the, the number 14? I'm sorry, I'm terrible p- pronouncing these guys' names. But, I mean, but they've been in the program for a little while. And if they're not starting to hit that, you know, hit that rotation, when do they? You know, I mean, if guys like Jeremiah Smith can come in and um, take the spot right away. I mean, how, how does he not? He's, he's, he's Julio Jones, Randy Moss. I mean, he's, it's ridiculous. And he's, he's, he's actually mossing our number one corners. And people are like, oh, no, a freshman's mossing our number one corners. doesn't matter. Uh, they, our corners are still really good. It's just Jeremiah Smith's that kind of generational talent. And uh, not to mention the next class uh, uh, Heartline might be bringing in is pretty ins- sensational as well. We'll be, we'll be covering that here at Ohio State Football with Scarlett Great uh, in coming months. But it's, it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, Hartline is still Brian Hartline. He's still going to bring in the top, top top flight recruits and who he wants. But um, in fact, number one receiver in the country, I think he was committed to LSU, is actually in a visit to Ohio State this weekend. Uh, but anyway, that being said, you know who who gets left out and says, okay, I, I need to seek opportunities elsewhere. Who who you know what what happens there? So it'll be interesting to watch that and uh, see who. Maybe Ballard finally says, okay, it's time for me to move on and try to start somewhere like a Cincinnati or something like that. Um, we'll see. Uh, I'm, again, these are just – this is speculative. I'm not saying anybody's – I've heard names and things like that. I'm, I try not to even do this kind of thing, but it's – mainly what I want to do is the message at the end of this video is going to be to just keep calm. It's okay. It does not mean the program is in ruins because of it. Now, no, no matter what Michigan fans are going to try, try to paint it as. Um, offensive line is going to be interesting because I know Tegra is wanting to play. And he's battling Josh Fryer for that right tackle spot. And I think Tegra can play guard, but I think they'd prefer him at that right tackle. Uh, Simmons is locked in left tackle, obviously. Uh, Donnie Jackson's locked in left guard. It looks like McLaughlin is taking that center spot from Hensman. That's another one I'm kind of curious about. Is Hensman going to say, okay, well, I don't want to be a backup this year. I was a starter last year. Um, does he say, well, screw this, I'm, I'm out of here. Uh, remember, there was some backlash of some of the, one of the interviews he gave during the, the bowl uh, prep. I don't know how much of that was true or whatever, but they, he faced some backlash, didn't start in a bowl game. Um, I don't know if that's those two are connected. Uh, the, 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 the statement was they want to get Matt Jones the film on center as, as a center for the NFL. It's like, well, okay. Um, that really went well. <laughs> so, um, And then, of course, you got Luke Montgomery as a right guard who's I thought Hinsman would sneak his way into the guard there, but they say like they like Luke Montgomery's athleticism to get to the second level at that right guard position. Uh, remember Josh Myers came in. They thought he was the left tackle of the future, ends up being the center because his, his athleticism lend it, let them believe he could be the left tackle, but they that athleticism is actually valued in the interior line, especially when you got to get to that second level. Luke Montgomery came in, one of the highest rated recruits uh, an offensive line we've had, and he – you know, we figured again, maybe left tackle, maybe right tackle, but nah, right now he's settling in at right guard. Maybe eventually he moves out, but we'll see. And of course, Fryer and Tegra, you got George Fitzpatrick uh, that might move his way out. Who knows? I mean, he apparently he's had a great camp, but they said that last year and he didn't even see the field. So I don't, I don't know. Or I mean, if he did, he was in a very mop up role. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens in that right tackle spot. Who wants to stay? Who what doesn't? I, I could see Tegra leaving if he doesn't get it. I hope not. I don't want to see him leave, but I do wish him the best if he does. It's going to be interesting to see that. Now, I can, I'm going to skip a couple of positions here because I think we're kind of settled at these positions. You might see a couple guys who are way down on the depth chart leave, and it's okay. But linebacker is going to be interesting because we only have like two spots. Um, you know, you, you know, Cody Simon's going to start. You know that already. He's locked in as a starter. And then you have uh, Sonny Styles moving from safety to linebacker. Kind of interesting. Um, 
Now, who does that push out? C.J. Hicks, they say the light's kind of coming on for him this spring. It'd be interesting. They're using him a little differently. Uh, he's definitely extremely athletic, and as a blitz linebacker, he's extremely special. Um, then you got guys like Gabe Powers. You know, I mean, where does he fit in the situation? I mean, he's been he's been here a couple of years now. Uh, got a lot of talent. So the only two positions, you got, do they rotate him enough? Do they find different ways to get him on the field? Uh, promise them situations where they can actually uh, play, see some more playing time this coming up year besides just uh, special teams and things like that. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. The CJ and the Gabe both say, screw this, I'm out of here. They don't start because of Sonny dropping down and basically going to be as probably going to be a starter at linebacker. Um, obviously, Cody Simon being the other guy. I mean, does Cody Simon act as a kind of a um, – example to these young guys like look i stuck around i wasn't a starter until my fifth year here or what is fifth or sixth he's been here forever um you can do it it's okay you can wait more one more year you get you keep getting better and better and better and then be the guy um that's it's gonna be kind of curious to see what happens there um uh, so i don't know i don't expect too many other surprises but you're gonna have you can have eight to ten guys and you just kind of have to look at their situation individually and say okay i get it now, the old guard of fan base, the, the fan base that's in that 60, 70, 80 year old, whatever, like my dad would have been one of these guys who said, I'm tired of this. I can't stand it. Nobody wants to stay and just work for it. Well, again, it's um it's about opportunities. It's it's it, these kids can go somewhere and start right away. It it's not the same thing as the 1970s and 80s regional TV. Like I go to Ohio State to hopes to play so I can get on TV and get seen by scouts. Now you can get seen from anywhere. And uh, so I don't blame these kids. Sometimes they look for opportunities to play. Sometimes they also have come down, come res they resign themselves to the fact that, hey, I'm probably not going to play pro ball. I'd like to just at least play while I'm in college. And uh, they say, this is my best opportunity to go to like, go to some smaller school and do that. Or, and then of course what happens is the fan base overreacts. Oh, you mishandled the, uh, the roster. It's as if it's these, how rosters are extremely easy to handle. I mean, Jeff, uh, Jeff Halfley even said it when he went to Green Bay to be defensive coordinator instead of being the head coach of Boston College. I'm sick of re-recruiting my team every year. Um, and there, there is an element. I know we always use that whole, well, the coaches get paid. They do this, they do this. I'm not saying players shouldn't get paid, obviously. But I'm saying this. There is an element to that. Well, players just don't want to wait their turn. There is some truth to that. It doesn't mean they're scared of competition. It doesn't mean there's anything negative about them. It just means – um, we all do some mm -hmm. stuff that could be impulsive and impatient at times, and we instead of waiting or uh, for the right time, it all it means is the guy says, "I look, I think I'd rather start at Minnesota than wait a couple more years at Ohio State." And not to mention, you got look at a guy like Jeremiah Smith that some of these receivers have been waiting their turn, and then a guy like that, a generational guy, comes in like that and just blows by him on a depth chart. You kind of understand, like, look, my opportunity may never come at Ohio State. I need to go strike while the iron's hot. So uh, Joe Burrow did the same thing. He's like, could he have waited and uh, Dwayne play his one year, go pro, and then Joe be the guy the next year? Maybe in theory, in hindsight, but at the time, you don't know what's going to happen. Dwayne had more eligibility than Joe did at the time. Maybe he didn't have a good year. Maybe he didn't have a good year and he's, he's kind of mediocre and says, well, I can't go pro. And then Joe's stuck and then he has to transfer and try to get used to a school in one year. And, um, uh, and then, and then all of a sudden, his situation, he's not the number one pick. He doesn't, you know, doesn't have the big deal with Cincinnati, things like that. So, I mean, you just can't play based on, well, well maybe the future will be okay. You got to you gotta go based on what the opportunities are in front of you and make the best decision to, uh, that you can for yourself. So, anyway, for all the guys who do leave, uh, I can tell you, I speak for Johnny, I speak for Shane here at, at, uh, at Scarlet and Great. We do wish you the best, and we have no, we don't hold any ill will or old grudges against you. Obviously, uh, I'm, I'm a, like, like Mike Gundy so long ago. I'm a man. I'm 40. What, what these kids do does not, and, and does not <laughs> impact my life whatsoever. Um, same with Johnny. He's got a family. Shane's got a family. I mean, we all do. We, we I'm so, so many of you watching right now. We all have lives, you know. So, it's a. Uh, it's okay what these kids decide to do for their what's best for them and their families and their and their lives. So, anyway, guys, we appreciate you tuning in. These are all just rumors and speculation. We'll, we'll, I'm going to hit you again with Buckeye football fan girl Lisa. Uh, we're going to preview the spring game coming up here in a couple of days. Uh, but as always, we appreciate you guys for watching, and we appreciate you for tuning in. Comment, tell us who you are afraid of losing. That's what I want to know. Who are you afraid of losing to the transfer portal? Is it somebody big? Somebody who's kind of up and comer, uh, young guy who uh, is it could somebody we've already lost, like Dallin Hayden. We're going to lose him, 
uh, comment in below. Who are you afraid of losing? As always, appreciate you guys for tuning in. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you can. If you like what you see, like that, hit that like button. It helps the algorithm, helps us grow. As always, guys, goodbye. God bless. And of course, go Bucks.